Hey everyone, welcome back to Seeker Plus. I'm your host, Julian Hugan, and let's just jump into it. In the first two episodes of this series about archaeology, we talked about how archaeologists approach uncovering ancient artifacts and dating them through radioactivity measurements and relative information. Then we got into some really cool examples of recent archaeological discoveries and touched on the question of whether we should be digging up humans from the past in the first place. Honestly, there's no straightforward one-size-fits-all answer there, so I definitely check that episode out if you haven't already. And it ties into what we're going to talk about in this episode, could technology enable us to be less invasive in our approach to archaeology? The short answer is yes, and it's already helping with this, but the long answer is yes, plus lots of lasers. I know, you were probably wondering when we'd get to the lasers. It's all I'm ever wondering, to be honest. Archaeology professor Sarah Parkak paints an incredible picture of how futuristic tech could revolutionize the entire field of archaeology in the next hundred years or so. I'll link to her full article in the show notes because there's so much more that I'm not going to cover. But the gist is this. Picture, say, a dirt mound, maybe 500 square meters. We think there might be something incredible inside, but we don't know. Instead of digging carefully into the mound with shovels and brushes for, say, 40 years, a fleet of drones is deployed. The drones are equipped with thermal infrared, hyperspectral sensing systems, and LIDAR. More on LIDAR later. But basically, these drones have the systems to shoot lasers and detect architecture below the surface of the ground with incredible accuracy. Oh, and it only takes a few minutes to do. Then these 3D images could be analyzed by a technician to understand not only what the structure looks like underground, but also show in different colors how construction may have occurred in different phases. Computer models can get even more information by comparing these images to a database of similar ones. And remember, no digging at all has occurred at this point. From there, Parkhack elaborates if you wanted even more information, you could deploy another set of drones, this time with lasers that can drill tiny holes and shoot super tiny ultrasound probes into the mound. The ultrasound could help you build a model of structures from the inside, including the artifacts, coffins, and other materials. And then you send tiny robots down to collect DNA from bones or little material samples. Maybe you even 3D print the artifacts that were scanned so they can be put in museums or brought to schools or put in replica buildings. They could even be printed in the same materials like lapis lazuli. It's so awesome. It, the more I talk about it, the more fired up I get. But really, the implications are incredible. I mean, think about just how much we could investigate without needing to clear intrusive permits for digging or risk damaging samples by exposing them to the elements or clumsy grad students. And there are so many scenarios where this could be helpful. One that pops to mind is cities like Rome, where civilizations have been building on top of one another for 10,000 years. It's quite a bit easier to dig out an abandoned pyramid in the middle of the desert compared to a buried temple in the middle of one of the busiest metropolitan cities in the world. In places like Rome, there's often a conflict between preservation of historic sites and, like, building better subways, stuff like that. So scans could help city planners decide where to dig for new construction projects. So while tiny excavation robots are the stuff of the future, LiDAR is very much a tool that's enabling these non-intrusive discoveries today. LiDAR is a remote sensing method that uses light in the form of a pulsed laser to measure ranges or distances to the Earth. It's usually deployed from the air by a plane or sometimes from a handheld device. Lasers shine from the device over the area that an archeologist wants to map and these lasers are essentially brief pulses of light. Then the instrument detects how long it takes for the light pulse to bounce back to it. That measurement tells it how far away the object is, and then those measurements are plotted with GPS. It's crazy precise. When that data is plugged into a computer, it can be used to 3D map the area. So if you're flying a helicopter over a dense jungle and using a regular film camera, you're just going to be able to see a top layer of trees. But LiDAR is able to see the trees and down into the dirt. This technology was first developed in the 1960s for the U.S. military. LiDAR has also been used by NASA to map the surface of the moon back in the 1970s. And another major field where LiDAR is being used is in self-driving cars. It's just much more accurate at surveying in 3D space beyond what conventional cameras can capture. 
but spotting ancient sites using LiDAR is proving to be quite successful. Gone are the days of expeditions through swamps off of vague clues from mysterious strangers and smoke-filled bars. I assume that's how it used to be done. Just last year, an international team of scientists published findings that used LIDAR to discover a previously unknown site in Mexico. The site, known as Aguada Phoenix, has turned out to be the oldest and largest known structure built by the Mayan people. Its age and size has been upsetting preconceived notions that Mayan society grew gradually when, in reality, this discovery suggests that they came out of the gate fast with massive building projects 3,000 years ago, which is so cool. Hyperspectral imaging is another tool in play here. Yeah, hyperspectral. I didn't just make that up for a hyperbolic reason earlier. This entails measuring the spectral signatures of materials. Spectral signature is basically the chemical composition of an object. It's the same technique that astrophysicists use to figure out what chemicals are in supernovae out in space. It's why they're sometimes called galactic archaeologists. It works by collecting all the variations of the reflected electromagnetic radiation from an object and then plotting them out. When you compare this plot to the chemical signatures of different materials, voila, just like that, you know what something's made of. Okay, you got me. It's a bit more complicated than that, but you know, in short, voila, basically. Here's a couple things that this could tell us with the context to archaeology. Ceramics or metal production leaves a signature because it requires burning at super high temperatures, so that could tell archaeologists what kind of industry occurred in a place. Having a lot of bones in an area like an ancient cemetery changes the chemical composition of the soil, so a burial site could be found from above ground with this spectral imaging. Want to know whether a container you found is a lamp? Test it for signatures of burning oil or blubber. The creativity in using these tools is just astounding to me, and it's getting better and better. One super creative use of all this technology is in this project called SciArc, which is a nonprofit that's working furiously to digitally record and archive models of the world's most significant cultural heritage sites, particularly in current conflict zones or regions threatened by natural disasters and climate change. So, the future of archaeology is looking pretty great. But before we go, I had one last thing I wanted to know. When I think about human history and what out there has actually stood the test of time, I think of massive stone pyramids, Mayan temples, great Roman structures. What about modern humans? How will we be remembered? Is digitally recording everything making our civilization more permanent or easier to erase? I'll leave you with this quote from our favorite futuristic archaeology expert, Sarah Parkak, on this notion. She said, Nothing ever disappears forever, it seems. Except socks. Well, there you have it. This was a massive topic for me to cover, and I could honestly see us coming back to it in the future at some point. That wasn't an archaeology pun, but... I'm it works. So if you have a question or an angle you'd love to learn more about, let us know in the comments or any other thoughts you might have for future episodes of Seeker Plus. Thanks so much for spending this time with us, and I'll see you next time.